What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the EU4 1936 star AI only battle. Still two hu huge wars raging on, mainly in Africa, um, Asia and in Europe. A little bit, France is starting to switch it in their favour. But one thing I'm interested in is if Italy, what are they thinking about all this? Because Spain have got no troops around, they're off in South America. Germany and France have pretty much whittled each other down. Italy, I think, are the strongest in Europe right now, if you discount the Soviet Union, and I'm not sure, actually, and Great Britain, to be fair, although Britain obviously are at war with th lots of other people, including the USA, so Britain won't be trying to do anything. So Italy are in a strong position here. They can practically go after whoever they want. They've got a 77 stack plus a 12 stack there um, at home. They've got 100 plus thousand troops in just across the Mediterranean in North Africa too. So if they want to go for Austria, maybe Switzerland, they could do that, Yugoslavia even. And if they wanted, they could go for France, and that could bring Germany back in to this. And it would be a chance, obviously, to get rid of France in North Africa if France were to lose to uh, Tunisia and Germany. I'm surprised Morocco and Tunisia haven't been sieged out, by the way. Just noticed this, but um, that's pretty impressive. Well done, guys. Other big wars, it seems... That war is, that Tunisia war, they're close, 48 war score. I'm not sure how much they'll need exactly, but the more France push back, the lower that's going to get, because the most valuable provinces in this war are in France and Germany. In the other war, Britain is slowly losing more war score. India is pretty much completely occupied now by uh, either Marwa or China. China do have parts that they obviously want for themselves. Oh, we just got two peace deals. Um... And one of them is a big one. Okay, let's see. Did Tunisia get their independence? Yep, they did. Did Morocco? Yep. I don't think any of the, fr the French... Did French Mali? I doubt they would, because they'd be called... Nope, they're no longer a colony, but they're still called French Mali. That is going to be confusing. I thought they would have just become Mali. Um, okay. Uh, France... Did France... No, I don't think France gained anything. I'm pretty sure the borders look like that already. All right, maybe France gained three provinces there um, from Germany, which is weird because Germany side won, so I don't know how that would work out. But the other peace deal, uh, Sweden. Oh, my goodness, Sweden took a huge chunk out of Finland. So strong Sweden in Scandinavia. I mean, they need to rebuild, obviously, but after fighting let their manpower recover there's Belarusian separatists now but again the Soviets just another 40 stack just there or nearly 40 stack ready to clean it up Armenian separatists I think we're going to see them fall apart before the end but at the moment they seem to have things covered when they're out of manpower and it keeps going wrong maybe we'll see it change especially being in a war for so long that can't help um, 61 more score this war is going to like I can't Probably a lot more things did. Oh, there we go. Mali changed. I think it just waited till the end of the month. But there we go. Mali. Now, I mean, they're surrounded by France and Britain. But again, what, like I said, once more of these nations start to gain their own independence through other wars, France will be weaker now. If someone else was to try gain their independence, we'll probably see some more of them. And obviously, yeah, once there's more sort of non-colonies bordering each other, that's when we're going to see more wars. Mali is already full of rebels of some sorts. I'm trying to... Get rid of this so and see what it is. Um, Segoyan set. Well, we may see Mali fall apart already. It doesn't. Oh no, never mind. They got a 37 stack. They seem pretty, pretty cool. I mean, they're just surrounded by this big blue French blob, but they're quite big. I like this straight border. They, they just walk through the desert, drawing almost straight line. It's not actually that straight. Um, but that's pretty cool of them. Uh, the Netherlands are still losing to Brazil, as I would expect. Uh, Peru are starting to make some gains against Bolivia. And Turkey are actually now no longer winning against Greece. I presume they don't have the uh, ships. Yeah, the Greek Navy looks a little bit stronger, which is causing them some problems. Bolivia losing to Peru. Yes, Peru got the numbers. They're starting to really push in now. Spain starting to siege out. I mean, where is the Argentinian capital? Is it this one? Yeah, okay, if you usually need to get up here, get to Buenos Aires, Spain, siege that out. That'll be a ton of war score, then you can take whatever you want for your uh, Spanish southern Chile. No, I thought it was northern Chile. Yeah, it is northern. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Northern Chile. Still no new wars. Turkey now losing. That is surprising. Um, I think India's going to change very soon. I mean, we saw, I presume, the Tunisian side probably hit about 50 war score when they finally got the peace deal, so... For 
Marwa to have 64 and not have pieced out yet suggests they want a bit more. I mean, they're probably under pressure to give China something, you can imagine. Um, and obviously there's British Nigeria, is it, who's fought on their side as well. Probably have to give them something. Tibet probably won't matter. They're part of China as a, uh, a vassal. Japan is yet to do anything as well. They're one of the other big nations that sort of sat very peacefully, like Italy. Saudi Arabia, I guess you could say, too. I mean, I thought they might have at least taken out Oman or Yemen or even invaded Iraq. If they were feeling brave, I mean, they are enemies. But again, they're warned by the Soviets. I'm not sure how that would play out. Obviously, the Soviet Union, pretty close. And if they took out all of Iraq, they'd be very close. Um, Romania are still pretty peaceful. I mean, they can't... They've still got peace treaties with uh, Greece and Albania. But um, they're staying pretty quiet at the moment. I mean, a lot of these nations have allied somebody big. Poland, Switzerland for Hungary, Yugoslavia have got Rome. Oh, well, are allied to Romania. Maybe they don't. Want to, they're not going to attack their friends. But Czechoslovakia have got Austria, Yugoslavia, Romania. That wouldn't go well. So they're being smart. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. What's happened? Nigeria is now independent. There we go. We're starting to see some big African nations, and they're already having a communist revolution of all things. Um. Wow. Nothing. Nothing really happened. British India. You're not free? No, you're still... Oh, wait, I think... Wait, no, no, this is still just Great Britain. Um, so they lost Nigeria. And who's... It was Marwa. Are all these vassals now free? Yep. I, I don't really know what else has happened, but let's click on Britain quickly. If it works. <laughs> if it ever decides to work. Uh, they still have a lot of vassals, Britain. So, um, they lost a few of them. But that war really... A lot over nothing. Did they lose anything to China? No. They lost nothing to China. For the most part, Britain did pretty well there then. So um, they lost Nigeria and Marwa. That's about it. But um, now we can up the speed a little bit because everyone's sort of at peace. Um, we've still got the Dutch losing to Brazil. Lithuania actually just attacked Latvia, which means there was another peace deal. But I have no idea what it was. Oh, it was Spain and Argentina. Oh, yep, and Spanish La Plata is growing. Um, not sure how Spain are doing this, but good job, Spain. Oh, it's unusual. We've not really seen this fort. Lithuania are actually losing to Latvia, but that's because they haven't sieged this fort yet, while well, Latvia actually took something. Lithuania do have 2,000 more men. There is an 80 stack of Chinese troops just leaving Poland. That is not suspicious at all. Um, Turkey, there's just small wars now. That's good. The world's a more peaceful time. Two major African nations have been released in Mali and Nigeria. They'll probably play a big part in future wars for independence from certain nations. And that big sort of World War II's... Oh, Britain. Britain has got so many... Like, this is ridiculous. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep track of all these guys. But, um, sorry, Ethiopia. I mean, Britain just lost. Like, they just got... They just got whooped. I mean, mainland Britain is fine. You know, their troops here are all fine. But India... They just got absolutely crushed out here. And, you know, they're just like, yeah, let's go straight back in for Ethiopia. Why not? Let's uh, keep colonizing, because that's definitely not the problem here. Sudanese separatists have not risen up. Never mind, they're all dead now. <laughs> they're all dead. Oh, oh, and there we go. The Soviets are now attacking. Well, oh, they've just got out of a major war, and they don't care. They're just straight back into another one. Where even is Tanu Tuva in this game? Are they dead already? Oh no, it says Conquest of Tanu Tuva, but it's actually just Mongolia. They're not a nation. There's going to be a bit of a race between the Soviets and China now. They've teamed up against the greater evil, being Britain, instead of... It's kind of like um, Soviet Union and the USA teaming up, kind of, to take down Germany. Except they teamed up with China to take down Britain. And now they're probably going to have an arms race before they start picking on each other. Um, and China will normally win, unless because the Soviets are probably going to fall apart anyway. No offence. But, um, yeah, invading Mongolia, that, that's a good start, I guess. Maybe you go after Japan. If you could get Japanese Korea, these are some good provinces. Maybe that would help you a bit more. Um, maybe finding some friends. Cause you, oh, you're allied to France and China. Well, I mean, there's still this alliance, I guess. That is pretty important. China's actually got Thailand. China's allied to the USA. Wow. The USA is allied. <laughs> that's a good alliance for America. Credit to you, America, for getting that alliance with China. Soviet Union is allied to 
France, China. Germany is currently only allied to Norway. Okay, Norway, Poland, Spain, Morocco, Tunisia. That's quite a few people. Britain have got... I don't think Britain are allowed alliances. They have too many friends. Poland, who are you friends with? Hungary, Lithuania, Germany. Egypt don't have any friends, but they're guaranteed by Italy. So that could bring Italy into a war. Let's have a look. There's going to be some more wars shortly now. Peru. Nope, no new wars. But um, Peru making some real progress in their Bolivian war. 40. Five war score, but they're not attacking at the moment, so I'm not sure what they're actually doing. Um, but they are heading back that way. Oh, I stopped it perfectly on Christmas of 1943. Getting good at this, finding Christmas. It's good, good times. Um, click to select a country. No. Hmm. Nope, just still those wars. Turkey v Greece has now been a very long, long and drawn out war. Not sure what they're trying. There is a big stack of Greek separatists there. Romania, you can deal with them. You're just going to be like, yeah, they're fine. <laughs> Romania doesn't care. They're just like, oh, yeah, we could take them out. Or, you know, we could just leave them there. Germany's rebuilding. I can imagine their manpower is at zero and everything's going straight into the armies. Although they've rebuilt pretty well. They've already got about 200,000 plus men. France do not have that. But I imagine they're sending people off, off to the colonies. Oh, they are actually, you know, oh, France has just attacked Turkey. Oh, there's been some peace deals as well. Okay. Um, France has attacked Turkey to change its government form and Italy is... Oh, have you allied Italy? Oh, France has allied Italy and the Soviets and China and Austria. Oh my goodness, France. That is an OP alliance. But yeah, France and their allies are fighting Turkey at the moment. Um, also, Mexico... Me Mexico? Me it's Red El Salvador and Mexico. And, oh my goodness. And Mexico together. That, that's what that was. Uh, Mexico has attacked El Salvador... See how that goes out. Peru haven't pieced out with Bolivia. Never mind. What am I on about? Um, what wars have ended? Uh, Turkey pieced out with Greece. And they just took the one province by the look of it. Just this one. Oh no, it was this one. They didn't take anything. And now there's a 48 stack of French troops here. The Turkey, what tech level are they? Uh, they're behind France. So France should have enough numbers here. Plus they've got plenty of other colonies. Italy are coming too. Uh, oh, the Soviets pieced out with Mongolia. That was one of them. Uh, there's a weeny bit of Mongolia left, but for the Soviet Union, they're still flexing their muscles, still showing off, and actually they've killed almost all the rebels. Now they're not fighting on so many fronts, they can go after the rebels. I wonder what their manpower is like. Let's actually go and have a look at the uh, ledger quickly, see how everyone's doing. So in terms of manpower, the most peaceful nation is top, the USA, 311,000. The rebels of the world are actually 305,000, but you know, that's spread over so much, it's not like one giant can't imagine a 305 stack of rebels walking around. Japan in second again on manpower at least because they haven't done anything. The Dutch are doing pretty well. The Soviets actually have 90,000 men in manpower. Um, it's interesting. Has anyone got zero? That is obviously what we're interested in. There's Spain, Bolivia and Peru are all out of manpower. Everyone else is actually recovering which is pretty impressive because there's been some big wars going on. How is Germany? I can't, I've got to try to find Germany. Zanzibar? I didn't even know some of these nations are free. Um, there's more. There's so many nations in India. It does get a bit confusing. Germany. There's Great Britain. Um. Anyway, let's have a look at force limit. That's the most important one, really. I mean, you can look at total, but you know, once they're out of war, there we go. The USA is currently the strongest. Seven hundred fifteen thousand troops. Head of Great Britain, five hundred eighteen thousand. There's China and the Soviets, both around just under four hundred, four and a half hundred thousand men. Is that a number? Japan are in fifth. Just level with Germany. They're about 30,000 ahead of Italy. And they're ahead of France. Oh, wait. Never mind. Rebels have a lot of manpower. They only actually have 185,000 rebels in the world. The Netherlands actually have more troops than Brazil. Uh, Mexico then just behind Brazil. Spain, Canada, Nigeria surprisingly doing pretty well. So that's pretty interesting. Who's got the smallest military then right now? Pirates and natives. Um, Portuguese, Angola. A lot of colonies. Ecuador. I think Ecuador had just been banished to the uh, Galapagos Islands. That's why. Who's got the biggest navy, just out of interest? I'm sure there'll be some people who are uh, interested in that. Navies. Heavy ships is dominated by Britain and Japan. Light ships, Britain, USA. Galleys, Japan, Italy. Not many people with galleys. Transports, the British have got the most transports. It's good to know. And let's quickly flick back to the uh, current wars. Just so we can see what is going on. Hmm. I said 
about predictions about like but it's probably hard to do one because obviously it's not like a sieve game where everyone starts at the same point everyone you know there's better start, nations start off much better off than others i've come up with an idea so if you'd like to leave your comments on this video instead that would be great and i'd like you to leave your sort of top great powers list i want you to pick your top three so if you can get the top three in the right order for the end of the game then um that that that's what counts as a win i guess for you so all you got to do is leave a top three. Who's going to be first, second, and third? And there you go. If you get it right, there you go. That's how I'm going to judge this game. Who, wait, what is going on? Who, who, oh, okay. The Soviets have attacked Iran. Spain is now attacking Bolivia. And Spanish La Plata is now a colony. Loads of people are losing their colonies, but Spain are actually making colonies. And they're attacking Bolivia, who lost a big chunk, I think. Quite a big chunk to Peru in a peace deal just a minute ago and Peru's turn oh wait, no I clicked the wrong map mode I was like why is Peru orange all of a sudden um the Dutch are still trying uh, there was another war oh no France and those guys are fighting Turkey still oh Mexico ate up all of El Salvador that's what it was there we go um not not very important but the Soviets versus Iran there's the 22,000 Iranian troops here Britain have actually got a lot of troops inside Iran Britain have got troops everywhere though for some reason um there's actually a 50 stack of uh, French troops moving through Iraq. There's Turkish troops sieging out French Syria. So let's see how that goes. Um, hmm. Britain, how are you doing against Ethiopia? 17 war score. France are actually doing pretty well. They're the most got the most war score of any of the current wars against Turkey. I like this. Now the big wars are over, we can go back to our speed four, fly through, and we see some smaller stuff going on. That's sometimes quite cool to see. See if Italy land over here and do anything. Uh, Lithuania ate up Latvia. I missed that piece deal, but um, sorry, Latvia, you're gone. Lithuania starting to grow a little bit. Uh, Brit, no, this was still here. Yep, no change. Oh, Mexico v Nicaragua. Mexico finally awoken from their slumber. We would have missed that war because they're already at 60 war score. They'll probably fully annex Nicaragua, which is a smart move because it means they can go after Honduras. There we go, whenever they want. And uh, Colombia can't do anything. So that halts Colombia's expansion. The problem for Mexico is obviously America always comes in and finishes them at some point in the game. It always happens. They end up in a war with America and all their progress gets undone. Or I guess Brazil could have the same impact. Peru is starting to look quite big as well. No one's really got any alliances though. Um... Yeah, there's no one in South America with an alliance. It's very weird. Um, Paraguay, do you have one? Uruguay, no. Nope. Like Argentina, I haven't picked off any of these guys. Spanish La Plata has been fully anne um, annexed, occupied, but now there's Spanish troops here to come and change. Oh, no, it's not been. There's still the coast. But, yeah, now Spain is here to get involved. Spain is making a real effort in South America. That's quite impressive. Okay, Turkey is getting crushed, apparently. Yep. Wow, okay, Italy's here. This could be a weird peace deal. I think we... It is to change government form. I mean, I don't know what Turkey's government form is. I know the Soviets changed it to a... Gra it's a socialist state of a grand republic. That was enforced by the Soviet Union, apparently. Um, uh, earlier in the campaign, obviously, the Soviets in that war also took a lot of land. So I think we'll see French Mashriq here grow a bit, even though it's not a colony. It's just France's land. Probably see France gain quite a bit in the east. We might see Italy gain the west. If Turkey completely disappears, that's unlikely. I think Turkey's very big. It'd be unlikely completely disappears. Is there another peace deal? I don't think so. Um, always, if I miss something, just something kind of big, just put it in the comments and obviously everyone else can see it then. Um, minus 99 war score. I was going to say, what do you need to... Is it not going to let me... Hang on, I want to see what it takes to... Um, Where's the button? There's a thing, isn't there? Oh, there it is. 26%. Okay. Yeah, you need 367% to annex all of Turkey. So there won't be much land going. But I presume we'll see it share a little bit. Maybe Italy will get a foothold in Anatolia. This is the first war we've seen them in since the start when they were all with Ethiopia. Ooh. Ooh, this is juicy. Manchuko and France and the Soviets versus Japan. That's pretty big. Now, the Soviet Union is making pushes into Iran at the moment. Um, but China's not involved in this, are they? No, they're not. But they do want Manchuko. The second Manchuko get independence, I think China might take them out, which will cause some issues with the Soviets as well. But yeah, there we go. Manchuko 
and the Soviet Union versus Japan. Now, Japan has got a lot of troops, as we saw earlier. They've got 88,000. I mean, Manchukuo have got 55,000, but they're a few tech levels behind Hirohito. If he can get his troops over, he should be okay. If he can kill Manchukuo quickly. I mean, France don't have too many troops out here. They've got some boats, but that's about it. Taiwan, there's more Japanese troops, but the Soviets don't have really an 80 stack over there. But apart from that, they don't really have that much. Um, and obviously they're focused sort of on Iran at the moment. Now let's see if Turkey can survive this. I think... No, I don't think there's been a peace deal. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's a big one, if there has been one. Um, wait, no, Brazil haven't peaced out yet. Oh, there we... Wow. Italy got nothing. That's not going to be... I mean, they were. Oh, Turkey got an amazing leader, though. 665. They're no longer. They're now a constitutional republic, so they've basically become democratic, I guess, if you look at it from an ideological perspective. And there we go. French. What was French Syria, basically, is now French Anatolia. France taking a big chunk of southern Turkey. Doing a bit of a race with their ally there, the Soviet Union, to finish off what remains of little old Turkey. Romania could probably give it a go, to be honest, but. Um, They've only got 38,000 men. I don't know whether it would be... Turkey's land is still worth quite a bit, I think. Hang on. Let's see how much... It would still take three whole war... You need to 100% them twice still to take everything. So these provinces are worth quite a bit. Constantinople, they're 39% in particular. They get more and more valuable. That's probably why Italy got nothing, to be fair. If, you know, if they weren't as valuable, Italy probably would have got this western bit, which would have been an awesome area to see how that affects the world up oh, there we go mexico v colombia that is a british britain is also fight oh oman and the saudis did you finish off for ethiopia britain what did you do to ethiopia i think I, I don't think they did anything is this war even over yeah it is over hang on did you do anything okay they lost a bit of land i just i didn't know what it looked like before that was all um so britain is now at war with Saudi Arabia and Oman. Now, the Saudis are pretty strong. They won't be easy. Actually, maybe not. They've got a 39 stack, but that's about it. But um, Britain, yeah, Britain should be fine. Um, Mexico v. Colombia, that's just a war between drug gangs, basically. I mean, come on. It's just like, it's obviously the uh, people sneaking it into the USA are just unhappy with the uh, producers down here in Colombia. I've been watching Narcos, so my knowledge is up greatly. Um, Soviet Union v Iran that's still going on, Soviet's doing pretty well Dutch are losing, I can't believe this war's still going on and Manchukuo hasn't really got going yet, it's still on zero war score um, still pretty surprised, France taking a big chunk of Turkey, I mean I don't know why you're changing Turkey's government form if you're just going to take all their land, you may as well just take more and not change their government form but, I mean there'll be some rebels I'm sure I mean France are doing pretty well so far this game and they've got some strong friends Italy, Soviet Union, China, Manchuka. Obviously, the thing for France is here. They need to watch out because um, their territory out here. Yep, Japan has already made a landing in French Indochina. World War Three is beginning. Also, if China gets involved, this would be big because they are very strong. Um, and they've got some good alliances too. The U.S. and the Soviets. That is, that is a monster of an alliance there. China and the USA. I mean, obviously, the USA don't tend to do very much. Unless they desperately need to send troops across the sea. This isn't... Because it's not like... There's not planes or anything in this, obviously. Britain are making progress. Um, where's Oman? Which one's Oman? Oh, no. This is British Yemen. Okay, I was like, why, why are they occupying Yemen? But this is Yemen. This is British Yemen. There's a difference. Um, Oman has actually stayed pretty untouched for the most part so far. Um, they're just hoping to be spared when Britain finally finishes off the Saudis made an effort and it seems like now the Saudis are going to pay for that Iran what are you going to lose in this oh my goodness what the heck just why is there so many wars all of a sudden Italy are at war with Ethiopia and Italian Somaliland is also at war with Ethiopia just separately um, Austria attacked Hungary and brought in they brought in Poland and Switzerland I don't know what Austria were thinking um, I don't know, that's Yugoslavia I have no idea what they're doing over here um, oh, there's an even bigger war. Romania, Albania, Czechoslovakia, Yugos... Oh, okay, so the people that Austria at war with are also at war with the other four nations. That makes sense now, a bit more sense. Venezuela are fighting Colombia. There's no way I'm going to be able to tell the difference between those flights. Colombia, 
I think Colombia are just trying to relocate. They're like, okay, Mexico's going to take all our land. Let's just take Venezuela and switch switch over. We'll just see Colombia shift to the right. Um, there's a lot of wars. But yeah, the big thing there is that um, in Europe is that um, Romania is at war. Romania and all these green guys are at war with Poland, Hungary, and that's why Austria. It, it looks bad. There we go. If we click on Hungary, that shows the full extent of it of Poland. That's interesting. A big war, I guess, in Eastern Europe. I think the Romania, Yugoslavia, Austria, Czechoslovakia side should win. But that's going to be it for this episode, 1946. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe if you're new. Try and push the channel to 600 subscribers or the greater goal of 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.